Good day, Grade 12s. My name is Karen Mazokere. I'd like to welcome you to lesson number 16 from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student. I've written Economics Grade 10, 11, and 12, and uh, I've also published Business Studies Grade 11 and 12. I've also written a book about myself. You can check it out. Yes. Right, so in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to do features underpinning forecasting. So just like those guys from uh, the geologist, they give us a weather forecast. They tell us tomorrow is going to rain and then it's going to do this. It's going to be sunny and so on. We also do the same in economics, but with us, we focus the economic activity. So there are things that we use to focus that there is a recession coming, there's a depression coming, things like that. So in this lesson, that's basically what we're going to go through. So we're going to go through all those indicators, leading, lagging, coincident, and composite indicators. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, also like the video and share it to those whom you think uh, will benefit from it. Thank you. Stay tuned. So as usual, we start with our homework. So question number one was, uh, the new economic paradigm is embedded in DASH policies, that's demand and supply side policy. Explain the new economic paradigm for eight marks and then briefly explain how South African government would apply fiscal and monetary policy to smooth out business cycles. So for those two for eight marks, I'm not going to, you know, go through it. I'm just going to give you the answers, then you can mark yourself. I hope you did the homework. Okay. So there we have it, uh, explain the new economic paradigm. It's basically what we did in the previous lesson. Okay. So in each case, you just pause the video and then you get going. All right, so let's move on now to features underpinning forecasting. As you have seen there, we are introducing unit four, which happens to be the last unit of uh, business cycles. All right, so features underpinning forecasting. It's a possible essay type question for 2017 to 19. However, it was extended to 2020 and uh, this is 2021 and we don't know if we are going to get new exam guidelines. If we will, then okay, fine. This will still be in the CAP syllabus, but it won't be an essay type question. If we they extend it to 2021 then it is an essay type question so as of today we don't know what is going to happen but let's get down to it features underpinning forecasting so economic indicators used for forecasting let's look at them uh, i mentioned them in the introduction but now let's go into depth with each and every one of them so an economic indicator is a statistic and you know statistics are numbers okay so it is a statistic about economic activity so we all know that we measure economic activity using the the, the main thing that we use to measure economic indicator or uh, economic activity is real gdp Okay, which is the total market value of all final goods and services produced within the borders of a country over a specific period of time, usually over a year. So uh, economic activity, okay, usually of macroeconomic scale. Uh, we also talked about this word. Macroeconomics means, I said macro means big. So when we study macroeconomics, we are studying the economy as a whole. We are not looking at individual businesses, individual households like that. We are covering the whole economy as a whole. So these indicators are covering uh, the whole economy as a whole. Okay. So let's have a look at what indicators we are talking about. They are used to interpret the overall health. So that means is our economy healthy or not of the economy, uh, either current or future and even previous uh, even the past okay current or future they show the way or direction in which the economy is moving 
Right, so uh, these indicators are classified into four categories. Uh, we used to classify them into three according to our CAP syllabus, but we added one. Okay, so according to their usual timing in relation to the business cycles. So remember, we are still on business cycles, uh, which is um, successive periods of fluctuations in economic activity. So what is it that we use to predict? By the way, I didn't talk much about this word here, forecasting. To forecast is to sort of predict. Think about uh, weather forecast. They tell us what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next, whatever, uh, you know. And so in economics, we also do this forecasting. I also mentioned it in the introduction. All right. Uh, so what are they? We have number one, leading indicators. So we are going to go in, in depth with this one uh, just now. And then we have lagging indicators. We have coincident indicators. And we also have composite indicators. So let's go to leading indicators and see what they are. So leading indicators are indicators that usually change before the economy as a whole changes. So the key word here is before. So these indicators, they start to show signs uh, before the, in the, the economy as a whole changes. All right, uh, let me give you this example. So with indicators, is there anything that can tell you that uh, it's going to rain, for example? All right, I always use this example. So let's assume that um, you look outside. Is there anything that can tell you that it's about to rain? Of course, the clouds. If you look at the clouds, if you just look at how it looks outside, uh, you can confirm that it's, it's, it's probably going to rain. You might be wrong, but the, the fact remains, uh, it can tell you that there is a good chance of raining. Then maybe you need to carry your umbrella or you need to use... Um, let's say uber instead of public transport because maybe it's going to drop you exactly where you want to go but that thing that tells you before it rains that it's about to, it's going to rain uh, whatever it is it's leading so the same happens to an economy there are certain things that will tell us that a recession is coming there are things uh, i'll give you the examples of all the things uh, just now uh, so it will tell us that a recession is coming, a depression is coming, and things like that. Right, so as you have seen from the example, right, they show us or lead where the economy is going, just like we saw in the example. They arrive at the turning point, peak and trough before the economy does. So just like the word suggests they are leading so before we reach a peak they are there already uh, so in other words they show us that a peak is coming you will see examples of those just now they are therefore useful as short-term predictors uh, so to predict the long t the, the, the short term we make use of these leading indicators okay uh, stock market returns are a leading indicator okay this is one of the examples but i'll give you a whole list of these indicators so the stock market usually begins to decline uh most likely actually the bond market uh could be doing it before the stock market actually does it so the stock market usually begins to decline before the economy as a whole declines and usually begins to improve before the general economy begins to recover from a slump like where we are currently uh today the stock market was actually from yesterday the stock market was doing quite well you might be wondering what's the date today today is the 8th of february so if you check the data in future you you might want to see what i'm talking about so yes you will see that the stock market was going up today okay other leading indicators include the index of consumer expectations building permits and the money supply. They give consumers or businesses and the state a glimpse of the direction in which the economy might be heading. So for that reason, we say they are leading. Okay. But they are not always accurate. Uh, take note of that. Okay. Other examples, we have job advertising space. Just think about it for a minute. How many companies are advertising right now? Oh, or at that particular point in time, uh, if there are many, 
it might be leading it might be an indicator that oh the economy is about to go you know up as more people start to employ that could be an indicator or if we look at job ad advertising space and we see that oh companies are not advertising these days that could be an indicator that oof, a, a recession is probably coming so these show us way before the economy does whatever it is that it has to do uh inventory and sales uh we look at stock in comp in businesses you know that could tell us and sales that every company is making so if a business sees that they are not selling they 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 begin to you know retrench and that retrenchment will come later on but something will have told the business to 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 retrench and so as many people begin to lose their jobs we then go through a recession but all that could have been shown or all these indicators might have shown way before it actually happens or what if there is more inventory or what if sales go up that could be an indicator as well you know businesses will begin to employ and it might be an indicator that we are about to turn around uh, let's say we have reached a trough let's say we've been going uh, okay let's say look at what's happening right now uh, right now what's really happening is we're going through lockdown and things are bad uh, and this has been happening since last year and so if we think about it for a minute uh, if sales begin to increase in shops, what is going to happen? They will, those shops will begin to hire, to recruit. And then as that happens, uh, you see that um, it might be an indicator that we are going uh, to recover. Okay. Uh, average uh, weekly hours worked in manufacturing. Okay, I'm not going to go in depth with each so just make sure you find a few that you are going to master because in an exam we can never ask you to list any seven uh, examples of leading indicators we can never do that the maximum we can ask you is two maybe like look at question 2.1.1 name any two or give any two examples of leading indicators for two marks then you say job advertising space inventory or inventory and sales okay we we pronounce it differently uh okay then the next one manufacturers uh, new orders for consumer goods and materials if you want to analyze each and every one of them yes you can do it uh, you can try to make sense out of this you can try to think how could this possibly lead how could it because we are calling it leading indicators so if you want to understand it more you can also research but Use your mind to try and reason why would we say these are leading indicators? Okay, vendor performance, manufacturers, new orders for non-defense capital goods, all this. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these, but look at these for a while. Money supply, interest rate spread, and so on. Index of consumer expectations, new uh, net new companies registered. Think about that one. Number of new vehicles sold. All these will tell us something. Okay. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to go in depth with each and every one of these, but I hope it's going to help. Then we move on to lagging indicators. So what are they? Uh, as the word suggests, lagging come on what could this mean lagging indicators are indicators that usually change after so our keyword here is after after the economy as a whole changes uh, let me give you an example so for our third indicator which is lagging indicators you can see from the word uh, lagging it's coming behind All right so with my example i would say uh let's say it was you were sleeping last night something said it's going to rain you didn't see it because you were sleeping and then it started raining you couldn't tell because you were sleeping you slept like a baby and my question is in the morning is there anything that can confirm that it was raining last night of course if you go outside and look at the grass if you look at the ground 
uh, you know, outside, you can tell. There are things that will tell you that it really rained last night, even though you didn't uh, realize that it was raining. So my point here is uh, leading indicators. It's like before it rains, something that tells you that it's going to rain is what I'm comparing to leading indicators because they tell us before a recession. Coincident indicators, it's when it's raining. Uh, I'm, I'm saying like that because uh, let's say during a recession, the things that happen during a recession, they confirm that we are in a recession. And lastly, uh, coincident indicator, uh, it will, uh, okay, maybe not lastly because uh, we're going to have composite, but I'm not going to give an example on composite. All right, so those ones will, uh, lagging, they will confirm that there was uh what do you call it a recession just like raining they will confirm that it was raining last night okay so as you have seen from the example they peak after the level of the economy and the coincident indicators so they are lagging behind they are doing whatever it is that they are doing after the economy has already done it typically uh the lag is a few quarters of a year the unemployment rate is a lagging indicator. Okay, already you are seeing an example. Uh, employment tends to increase two or three quarters uh, after an, an upturn of the general economy. Lagging indicators won't change direction until after the business cycle has changed its direction. So they are always lagging. Examples, we have hours worked in construction, total of commercial vehicles sold, all these i'm not going to go in depth with each and every one of them but you can look at them if you want to individually analyze each and every one of them you are more than welcome okay moving on to the next one coincident indicators uh these ones um as you will see in my example just now uh coincident indicators change at approximately the same time as the economy as a whole uh, thereby providing information about the current state of the economy so as you can see from the definition these ones uh, they change at the same time so uh, i'm going to underline this this one here same time they are happening so as the economy goes up they are going up when it reaches a peak they reach a peak so they sort of confirm that yes we are truly in a recession and uh, here's my example. So just like leading indicators, coincident indicators are those indicators that confirm that we are in a recession. So these indicators, they happen at approximately the same time as uh, what's really happening in the economy. Uh, using my rain example, uh, I can say when it's raining, when it's actually raining, can you tell that it's raining? Of course, if you go outside, you can tell that, oh yes, it's raining, you get wet. So whatever it is that confirms that it's raining when it's actually raining, in this case is what I'm giving an example uh, and saying it is a coincident indicator because it's happening at approximately the same time as say a recession, as a depression and things like that. Okay, so as you have seen from the example, uh, a coincident uh, index may be used to identify after the fact the dates of peaks and troughs in the business cycle. Examples, we have a number of employees on non-agricultural payrolls, personal income less transfer payments, uh, industrial production and so on like i said from the previous ones uh just find a few examples that you can remember you can always remember you can make use if it comes like an essay an essay you can also give a couple of examples but two is maximum i would say so don't try to you know uh, master everything here just find a few that you will always remember then the last one or the fourth one is a composite indicator and th as the word suggests and if you saw my uh you know my like the way i said composite in the introduction i put my hands together like this i was trying to you know show that yes it's all the other indicators put in one 
let me put it that way so a composite indicator is a summary of various indicators so what are those indicators uh, leading lagging co coincident of the same time into a single index so we are it's it's sort of a bundle so we put them together that is what is meant by composite anyway the word composite means that all right the three composite indicators leading lagging and coincident are often used to calculate a single composite indicator to benchmark a country's economic performance a composite indicator measures multi-dimensional dimensional, dimensional uh, concepts e.g competitiveness e-trade or environmental quality which cannot be captured by a single indicator ideally a composite indicator should be based on theoretical framework which allows the individual indicators to be selected combined and weighed in a manner which reflects the dimensions or structure of the economy being measured all right so as you can see here uh let's say always this is our time and this is economic activity so let's say gdp okay so uh this one here let's say okay let me let me just find somewhere where i'm going to draw a line okay so if i draw this line let's say time is moving let's say this is much so who got to match first it was this dotted line here you see okay and so it's actually leading so this thing is showing oh, oh let me put this line here okay so march april so let's say this is april and in april some things begin to happen that confirm that we have reached a trough but in reality this line here it shows you that we are still going down but these things are already confirming that yes finally we have reached a trough and we are about to turn around okay and uh it's so this one here shows us sort of a depression and if you look here on the same line this one is still thinking or or, or saying it is a recession because remember we have a recession let's say this part here recession and then we have a depression this part here this part here so uh if you see here the leading indicator is already on the trough it's already turning around but the the com the coincident is still on a uh, depression and the last one which is the lagging look here it's still on a recession so it will still go to uh, by the time okay let me draw another line here this was march april may so let's say in may what's going on with the with the composite here ah, not the composite the coincident the coincident is now saying oh we are now on uh, what do you call it trough but let's go up with the line here what is this this is the lagging the lagging is saying what okay let me let me say leading coincident and lagging okay i'll just do this for the month of uh, let me start with april so in the month of april the leading is saying uh trough the coincident is saying depression the lagging is saying what a recession yeah something like this and let's look at the month of may if let's say i go to the month of may let me see the first thing i see here is the 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 what the coincident it's saying trough so i'll come here and put a t so this one is saying trough and if i go up i reach here this is depression for lagging then i continue with my line here it's saying recovery already so if you see the leading when it says recovery this one is still saying what we are reaching a trough which is the the actual time here and this one is still going down 
if if i may put it that way so i'm trying to sort of make a model to make you understand that leading indicators would turn before the economy turns and then lagging indicators would turn way after the economy has already turned so i was just trying to I, I hope this thing this whole thing here is not going to confuse you uh there is no way you are going to draw something like this in an exam to try and explain uh, i'm just doing it for you to understand if i draw some lines remember we're saying this is a timeline so if it's a timeline we can put it in months in days in years it's up to us so this i could say 20 2018 here and i'll say 2019 something like that so whatever it is i do uh, as long as i'm showing that it's a timeline time is moving from january to february to march uh, it can help you understand what i'm trying to explain or what it is actually okay uh, moving on to the last part, which is now the homework. So your homework says the GDP of a country is an example of a dash economic indicator in forecasting. The last question is distinguish leading a uh, business cycle indicator from lagging business cycle indicator. All right. Thank you so much, boys and girls. Thank you so much, educators. Thank you so much whoever else is watching parents uh for 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 supporting and please share the video uh share other videos subscribe to the channel